Hello, and welcome to module 610 of the GPS MOOC. So now we've looked at each of the different GNSS constellations in turn. And a natural question that might have occurred to you along the way is, why do we need all these satellites? When you look at all of them together, is an amazing number of satellites dedicated to satellite navigation. As of today, September, when we're doing this video, there are 89 satellites available right now for satellite navigation. And around 2020, we expect to see almost 150 satellites available, even accounting for the, the latest updates, such as we just looked at in the last video, the fact that uh, QZSS has reduced their ambitions from having seven satellites over Japan to having four. But even accounting for the latest updates, 144 total satellites, and that's what's shown in that in the plot in front of you. That's what 144 looks like in all the different MEO, GEO, and GSO orbits. So why? Why do we want all these satellites? Well, the country is concerned mostly want them to ensure their sovereignty. Uh, remember that most of these systems have a dual use. They are military and civilian systems. And the military in some countries do not want to be depending on satellites from the military in other countries for obvious reasons. And so that is a very large part of why the satellites go up. But why do we want them in our cell phones? Why do we want to have receivers that can receive so many satellites? And the, we do want them in the cell phones and tablets and so on, and, and for the following reasons. One is we want higher availability of signals because that gives us better accuracy. And what I'm talking about is in places like this, in an urban canyon, that, that, that's San Francisco. But there are anywhere, many places similar in the world, hundreds of cities like this, where the signals don't reach you by direct line of sight. They, and w what we're showing here are actual the lines between a real receiver that was operating in San Francisco when we uh, collected this data and the position of the satellites up in space. And the way this is organized is that the white lines are the signals coming from GLONASS satellites through direct line of sight. So those are the direct line of sight signals that do not touch any buildings on their way to reaching the receiver for GLONASS satellites. The blue lines are GPS satellites that do not touch any buildings. And all the orange lines are signals that were tracked by the receiver but are blocked by buildings. So what that means is the receiver was not tracking the direct line of sight signal from the satellites. They were tracking some kind of reflection. So what that means, so if you look at this orange line, for example, it's, it goes through this building. Now, a signal going through a building will be attenuated by about 10 dB per wall that it passes through. So in a building in a city, that means the signal's attenuated by over 100 dB passing through the building, and your receiver will not track that direct line of sight signal. So everything you learned about pseudorangers is not exactly true anymore for that signal. And these orange lines are for signals that this receiver down here was tracking. So how was it tracking the signal that came through this building? Well, that signal had some molypath that would bounce off one of these buildings and reach that receiver. And so that's what the receiver is tracking. So the range to the satellite is wrong by how much extra distance, let's do it in green. So something like all this extra distance that that signal had to travel is going to be an incorrect range. And that will want to move your position by tens or even 100 meters or so. And you maybe saw this in the Multipath lab that we did. You maybe saw this for yourself. So although accuracy of GPS and all the other GNSs is, is down at the meter level if you're out in the open, when you're in a city, no matter how good the signals from the satellites are, when you pick up a reflected signal, you're subject to some tremendous inaccuracy. And the way you get rid of that is by tracking as many satellites as possible with direct line of sight. And that's why you need so many satellites, because you can only see two or three of any particular constellation when you're in these streets. So now, this raises the question that, that you might hear people say, well, that's all very well. But if you're in a street and all you see is the satellites up in one particular part of the sky, your HDOP will be very large. And that's been a myth that's been around 
for a while until people really started doing this for real. So this data was taken off a GPS GLONASS receiver, and now we've got GPS GLONASS Beidou receivers in cell phone, GPS GLONASS QZSS on Beidou as well. And what we're seeing is that that idea that things wouldn't get better because you only saw a sliver of the sky is not true. And I'll show you the real data from this particular example. The, the three GPS satellites that had direct line of sight, so that, that was the three blue lines shown here on the left and, and on the right. With those three satellites, we had an HDOP of 50. So and that's, that's after you, you, we, provide, we held the altitude fixed in the, the NAV equation, so you could get a solution. If you hold the altitude fixed and work out what your HDOP is, it was 50 with GPS only. And let me do that in blue, because the GPS was the blue lines. And if you do the same thing with GLONASS, we had an HDOP of 45. So in each case, if you only had a GPS receiver or you only had a GLONASS receiver, and you made a measurement error of 2 meters on that direct line of sight signal, the effect of those measurement errors, if you had measurement errors of the order of 2 meters, would be 2 times 45 or 50 in this particular example. And you'd have a position error of about 100 meters from the direct line of sight signals, never mind the reflected signals. However, with the combined GPS and GLONASS, signal, so you use all six of the white and blue lines, the result was this, that the HDOP of GPS plus GLONASS was 2.2. So you see the dramatic difference, and that's because of the nonlinearity of this function. You remember calculating HDOP, you take the matrix, the observation matrix times its transpose and take the inverse of that. So it's a nonlinear function, and you get this huge improvement by using two constellations, and so a similar thing is true if you're in a different, if you, this, is, this is at an intersection. You can quite easily imagine how you go down a different street. You drop down to only one or two GPS, one or two GLONASS. Then Beidou becomes really critical to have extra two from Beidou and get your HDOP down again. So accuracy in the urban environment is one of the main reasons we care about having many, many satellites up in the sky. OK, there's also availability of satellites for robustness. And something very interesting happened on the 2nd of April this year, where uh, by an error in, in the system, uh, the incorrect orbits got loaded up to GLONASS satellites. And at that time, there were some tests being done uh, side by side with a GPS, with a phone that had GPS GLONASS receiver in it. So this was a, a phone that was available in 2013. So that was here. And it was simultaneously being tested against a phone that's available on the market in 2014 that had GPS, GLONASS, QZSS, and Beidou. And without any warning, these GLONASS satellites started transmitting the wrong orbits. And what you see here is that the phone that was using just GPS and GLONASS had a position jump of 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers. That's much more than one or two meter accuracy that you think you're going to get from your GPS. And on the right, what we're showing is you can see the, the yellow lines that happened with the GPS GLONASS phone, but you see the blue lines that happened with G the, the phone that had GPS GLONASS, QZSS, and Beidou, and they follow this road very nicely. And this road, by the way, is through an environment very similar to what you just saw in San Francisco, lots of big buildings. And so you had good accuracy in spite of the fact that you had one of the systems providing errors of the order of kilometers. So how did, how did that happen? Well, this is, if we look, if we zoom in on that right-hand picture, it looks like this. The yellow lines are from the GPS GLONASS product, and the, the blue lines are from the one with GPS GLONASS, QZSS, and Beidou. And if we look deeper, what we see is that the GPS GLONASS phone was tracking these satellites shown here. So where you see this dB Hertz number, you see a positive value of dB Hertz. So it's tracking these satellites. And when the satellites are blue in this picture, it means they were being used in the solution. So for example, uh, let's go to green for gray here. We have a positive dB Hertz, but the satellite is gray. It means the receiver was not using those satellites in the solution for uh, whatever reason. Uh, maybe it didn't have ephemeris yet. Maybe the algorithms uh, had removed those receivers for some, those satellites for some reason. Uh, but the interesting thing is these two GLONASS satellites, so GLONASS satellite number one, GLONASS satellite number eight, were being tracked and used. 
in that solution and both those satellites had this incorrect orbit and so uh, at some stage the position jumped because it depended more on those satellites than on the GPS satellites and you see that huge jump. Okay, so what about the blue lines? Well, we look a little bit later where the GPS GLONASS solution has jumped off and the GPS GLONASS QZSS Beidou combined solution has not. And the very interesting thing here is that those very same two GLONASS satellites, one and eight, you'll see they are tracked by this receiver. They have a, a positive dB Hertz number, but they are grayed out. In fact, the entire GLONASS constellation has been recognized as bad. And in a, we don't have to go into the details of how that works inside a receiver. You can imagine for yourself, if you have lots of redundant measurements, you can tell if one system is bad. And that's exactly what happened here. And so those satellites were not used. However, the QZSS satellite was used. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Beidou satellites were tracked and used. And that's how that receiver managed to correctly identify and remove the bad GLONASS measurements and simultaneously get a very good track all the way around a, a deep urban canyon and a tough urban environment. So now you might say, well, why not just not track GLONASS in the first place? Well, that, that would have been fine on this particular day. But an interesting fact is in the last several years, every single one of the constellations has had their turn to have a bad day. GPS is by far the most reliable of the constellations, but even it has had a situation where a, a clock error happened in the satellite before the satellite was set unhealthy. Uh, QZ, uh, Beidou recently had a clock error in, in the transmission from one of its satellites, uh, Galileo, and this issue with GLONASS. So sooner or later, uh, one constellation will have some issue with one or more of its satellites. And as we just saw in the previous slide, all constellations continually have problems because of reflections. And so for these two reasons, that is why we want so many satellites in the cell phones. And the more we can have, the better the nav system is going to work for you. And then there's another reason to have many satellites. And this is an interesting one because it actually might go away in the future. But at the moment, you are, we are provided with really good jam immunity because uh, receivers, civilian receivers that track GPS, GLONASS, and Beidou are tracking across three different frequencies. You remember that GPS L1 is 1575.42 megahertz. GLONASS is a little bit higher across this band. And Beidou is a little bit lower. So when you get jamming either unintentional or intentional in one particular band, suppose somebody jams GPS and just sends a really high noise signal here to swamp the GPS, well, you can keep on tracking one of these others and, and similar for any other symmetric situation. Now, the interesting thing here is that the trend, as we've seen, is towards putting everything on L1. But it might take a while. And in the meantime, having somewhat some frequency diversity like this gives a benefit uh, in terms of making you immune from jamming. And then finally, if we look to the future, as I've mentioned in some previous videos, here are all the uh, different signals from all the constellations that we expect in the future. And by the future, uh, around 2020, we expect all of these constellations to be full and to have the new signals on L5 over on the left here. And if you just glance your eye down, what you'll see the pattern. You'll see that here at L5, we're going to have many signals from all the different constellations. And on L1 here, we will have many signals. And then there's L2 and L3 and so on in the middle where the, you don't have all of the different constellations lining up. And so what that means is we could well see, and I expect we will see, uh, civilian receivers, even in consumer products, with dual frequency. And the dual frequency will be L1 and L5. And we'll get the benefits of many satellites on two frequencies. And that gives lots of benefits, like you can get positions down to decimeter or even centimeter accuracy by working with a carrier phase in, in the way that we don't have time to go into the details. But the summary of it is when you work with carrier phase from signals from the satellite, you can get down to centimeter or decimeter accuracy if you have many signals to help you resolve something known as the carrier wave ambiguity.
And so the, the summary of this is lot, lots of signals on two different frequencies can give you very high accuracy indeed. And so that's yet another reason to want to support all of these different constellations in the receivers we build.